Guys, we're going to do some turret attacks today. So, uh, we're going to start with the turret. It's nice and easy. So, what we're, what we're looking for, uh, when we go for the turret, when we do the turret attacks here. Uh, first of all, the turret is uh, pretty successful. I'm going to demonstrate something actually real quick that came up during the week. So, uh, good scoring. Adam shoots on me. I sprawl and spin to his back. No score, no points. Here. Yeah. So, remembering that turtle and getting to the turtle, or even the side control of the side, uh, turtle of his turtle. Here, or behind him here, he's going to score your points sometimes as well. As well as just being in a good position. In addition, a lot of times you get to the turtle, it's from your opponent's escapes. He's in side control bottom. Here, and he either rolls towards or rolls away. He gets up. You need to be quick to react to make sure he doesn't hip roll out like we have done in the warm up. Or uh, get back to guard, sit back to guard. Okay? And um, it also happens when you're, as we've just been doing, when you're passing your opponent's guard, uh, they often turn to their knees. And once again, I need to be quick to the position to try to secure it. So, what I don't want, uh, what, the way you should use your turtle is the way we've been using it in the warm So, as like a hip roll out, as like a temporary staging position for your escape, okay? In other words, get out of trouble and immediately move, either sitting to guard or rolling up. So that's the way people should use the turtle. The way we want them to use the turtle, if they do go to turtle, is that it's our back attack, okay? That they turn to their knees, ultra defensive, and we have to break them down. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So let's start with that. Let's turn it up. So first of all, let's start with what he wants. So we're just on the hip roll, he wants to show the roll here side. Go. Wrong way, but here we go. Back here. Hip roll back to guard. Second most common, or one of the most common. He's gonna cock this leg like a dog, get him on my hip, and from here, sit into guard. Okay, he's gonna try and sit back, turn around, face me again. And finally, just as common, especially for all of me, is to try what the wrestlers call the Peterson roll, just wrap up the firearm here and roll under. Take these effects out, right? So we're gonna work the three of the, the most common things, methods of your opponent escaping. So we're gonna work first of all a position, just your basic fundamental position to stop those three things from happening. Or to counteract them pretty easily when they do. Okay? So first things first, we're gonna go with the side ride. So from here, I'm gonna have toes on the mat, not my knees on the mat. But in particular, not your near knee, because it's the one that you will get lazy with. Right? Most of the time people are comfortable enough to put this foot on the mat, but because of flexibility or tiredness or laziness, they put this knee down. And worse than that, they put this foot down onto the instep as well and not on their toes. Okay? What happens there? If he wants to go and sit into guard now, so the guard is simple, yeah. I'm very slow. If he wants to roll out, I'm slower. So roll out now, roll out. No chance of stopping that. I'm very slow and I'm very uh, cumbersome, okay? As soon as I put my toe up here and I go hip to hip, knee to knee, so I think about knee to knee, hip to hip, when he goes to sit to his guard, the knee is stuck underneath, you can see that? Okay, I wobbled a bit there because I'm sitting up tall right now over here. You can see he can't move the leg. When he goes to roll to his hip, he goes slow. The knee is already trapping here and I can, I've got a little time to either wrap over the top, go, do what we did earlier, or even start to sit underneath. So when he goes trying to free this leg, try to get underneath, set to look for that crab that we've done before as well. Okay, so that's near side is going to block that. For the roll, what he requires is my elbow, and this is good positioning regardless of whether he's going to roll or not. So if you reach around and grab your opponent's belly like this, and your elbow is just here at his hip, he can reach up and just grab your elbow. Okay, that's what's going to cause the roll. So what I'm going to do is make sure that 
Got my elbows actually back at his hips and blocking his hips. What's that going to do? It's going to stop him rolling me, but it's also going to, because he can't like control my arm. Here. Okay, not effectively. But it's also going to stop uh, him hip rolling as well, because my weight is going to be across here. So when Adam goes to lift his hips, okay, stuck here like this. See that? You go up here, even slightly, look how easy his hips come up off the mat. Okay? We're just going to start with basic position. I'm going to set up a grip for you as well. Pop up. Open his lapel, pass to the far side, and wrap it around his belly. That's what we're looking for here. Okay? There's a danger that when you open his lapel, that you reach in here like this. So what we're going to do is pass it with the other hand, because we don't want to get rolled over with that pubic syndrome. Okay, so when he goes down here like this, knee to knee, hip to hip, here. I want to like attack his neck, but he's got to tuck in tight. So I'll just use my hand underneath. Pass, take that lapel. Tighten around his hips here like this, like a belly wrap. This hand is still free. I want you to either use the horseshoe grip here on the back of his neck or threaten his neck and always be like keeping him under pressure. Hip to hip, knee to knee. Everybody happy enough with the position? Okay, when you get here, I want your partner to try and sit out or roll out or roll in. Okay, that's all. We're just going to play with the position a little bit. Have him move around. If he moves, you move with him. Look at this. Knee off the mat, constantly here. Always trying to stay behind him and just think about your armpit on his belt. That's pretty good for me. It's like a good reference point. Armpit on the belt. All right? Okay, let's go. Three, two, one. Stable in the position, and that's okay because it's a little artificial as well. Because I'm not really attacking, I'm just trying to hold the position. So sometimes when you're not getting the attacks on, when you're not kind of on the front foot and you're just trying to do. Uh, the escapes here like a little bit and move around the position you might feel a little unstable. The other thing is, is that you, if you look at me I'm, I'm leaning against them as well so some of you when you're going for it you're almost trying to be like here but I'm sagging on his hips I'm going to feel the weight of my hips okay here like almost driving in this way and when we tighten this, this lapel now we pass this lapel over to your side hold here I'm also closing this elbow so you don't want to be like this I'm not just holding his neck all right, uh, I'm going to give you like a little rule of thumb. Um, that, same as we always say, whenever we say, oh, it's a rule of thumb, that, uh, like, in a lot of cases, we're also going to break, right? Because um, a lot of times when we say, oh, yeah, always do this or never do this, it, it, it doesn't make sense because there's always an exception to the position. But what we're looking for is one hook and upper body control before we start to move. Now, that is broken by a lot of positions in here, but what that's we're gonna try to think. We're gonna think about upper body control, like a seatbelt, or here, like two hands, and one hook, like here, like we're gonna do now, or two hooks and one hand, right? Upper body control. Now that's broken. Why is that broken sometimes? Because sometimes you have upper body control with two hands, like a seatbelt, and sometimes you have a one hand, like a good tight lapel grip, and other times you don't have your foot in the hook, but you might have your knee. Here, straight through here, which we're going to do again. Let's take the back here in a few minutes, okay? And um, actually, this is the first one we're going to do. But uh, the idea is again, it's kind of that before we move them, we've kind of broken the throttle down a little bit with our leg and with our two hands. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So here, what we're going to do first, again, catching here and here. And again, he's nice and tight, right? So we did like a bit of clock choking uh, during the week. Today, I don't have that opportunity because he's very tight. So my outside knee is going to go in the gap between his legs and his arm. And what I need to do is like stamp it down to the mat. I don't want to like rest it on his thigh. I want to get it to the mat. So I'm going here and stomping down. Okay? Don't worry, I'll change angle in a second. And now my free foot, the foot that was on the inside is gone to his knee now. I'm going to put between his legs. Okay? Now, I'm going to go back, back, I'm going to move his leg, like his ankle towards me, so I'm trying to twist his knee, and I'm going to show real quick, and then we'll, we'll get back into it. So here, 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 here. And now I'm going to catch this. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of bits within this one. Uh, I'm just having to come over this side. So, 
Knee to knee, hip to hip. Pierce with this knee into the mouth. Okay, so my horseshoe grip on here as well. So this foot is going in between here because what I want to do is this. You can see without those two hips already, he begins to collapse. And, okay, he has to do, he has to keep his, has to change the angle of his hips unless he's like in the Chinese state circus. If there is such a thing, I don't know. It's Russian state circus, isn't it? Never mind. Like, he doesn't have some of the flexibility in his hips to not like move. And you can see him pitching up there. And that raises him off the mat a little bit. That's what's going to give me my uh, little bit of a uh, little bit of room, little bit of room for maneuver. It loses his balance a little bit. Pull back here. I want to kind of hook this. I'm very deep inside with the opposite knee. And now I'm going to go and bring him over. I'm going to use this. Reef this around like a pull start in a lawnmower. Okay, nice and firm and nice and tight. When I go, I'm going to make sure I just go to my elbow and just sit to my butt. So I'm not going to fall to my side. If you fall to your side, you just pull him on top of you. So I'm here. I'm sitting to my butt. See my foot is cut here. And now I can pop my hook in. Okay? Once we get here, again, lying back, we'll just bring him on top of me. And if you take my free foot now, what is now my free foot? Hip escape. And pop my hook back in. And now we can attach our seatbelt. Okay, let's look at that again. Tight with this grip. The tighter this grip, the better. Keep your opponent under pressure. Put horseshoe grip here. What I do, I close my elbow. Knee pierces in. Fight and catch that there. To your elbow and your butt. If I see anybody on their shoulder, they're barred for three weeks. <laughs> Better date the video there, haven't <laughs> We're not open for another series, okay? Look. And now I get my hook in, and from here, hip escape backwards to try and get your position. Okay? Let's go, let's give that a shot. Three, two, one. Just watch, um, I'm gonna, when I put this foot into the ankle, I'm going to keep it there to use it to get my other hook. So, pierce it in here like this, and now I sit to my shoulder here, or my elbow I should say, not my shoulder. But look now, so this is the hook I want in first. You can go for this one, of course, you know, you can. But this one's quite easy to get when you just catch it and pull it back to make space for this one. So you're almost dragging it over your other leg. Let's look at that again. Just jump that leg back up. So from here, catch it, pull it, and you push, pull, and get this bottom hook in. And that gives you the freedom then to hip escape with your top foot. If you don't have that, and you try to put the hook in here and you don't get it, you've still got a battle for the back because you've got good upper body control, which we worked last week. But from here, it's a bit more of a battle. And what we said was we want a good hook in with we Do you want to try a couple more shots? Yeah, let's go. Three, two, one. And then we we'll do one more. Yeah. I got to do something. Do something. Sorry. When the pressure comes up, it's when you can't get your foot in. So. When they're crossing their feet or their hips are really low and you can't get your foot in, you can attack the far hook on the same, on the far side, using the same leg. Uh, it's no more like dangerous or hazardous or, or, or like looser or tighter than the other, it just depends on which way you want to do it. So, same again, knee to knee, hip to hip, pass that lapel, and that's going to be our killer grip here, right? Especially for this one where we want the, uh, the upper body really in control. So when you do this grip here, it gives you that seatbelt like control across. Okay? Putting the horseshoe grip in it or the hook grip in it or the top grip, as Judah guys call it sometimes in at the back, gives you that counter grip, you know, that that, uh, that tightness across here. Try and keep his upper body under control and moving, right? Makes sense? So it looks like looks like um, Ryan's uh, elf in a sash from the Orange Lodge. It goes across here like this. And then um, what? It's here like this. So here, I'm going to do the same thing, but what I'm going to do, can't get this foot in, too much of a fight. So I'm going to go straight to the far side. 
as I do now, it becomes really, really important to sit to your ass and not sit to your edge of your shoulder, not fall to your shoulder. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to really make sure I do an outstanding job with that uh, grip here. Okay, so make sure that's on good and tight and that you can see your elbow. Okay, my elbow's in here like this. See your elbow, make sure your elbow's like contributing to that pull with the, uh, at the hip bone here, almost at his belt, okay? So the knee is pierced through. I'm gonna sit over the top now, try and get my foot on top of his thigh, and I'm gonna go to my elbow from here. Here, okay? Now you can see how important it is for, my, for me to be on my elbow. Why now? If I fall off my shoulder, I go straight to my shoulder. I just completely lose him over the top. So it's blocked and I need to be on my elbow. For this one in particular, as I was saying to a couple of you, you'll get away with falling to your shoulder with the other one because you already kind of have that uh, bottom hook in, your first hook there. But you won't get away with it with this one. So you make sure that you go to your elbow and sit. Don't collapse. Okay. See? Now you're going to use your bottom foot, not your top foot for the hooks or for the movements. And that's going to give you the opportunity to come to your opponent's back. Good to go. Let's go again. Three, two, one. So we're going to send it in. Everything's going to be exactly the way we're going. Now we're going to submit them, right? So from here. What I like to do, guys, is play the cat and mouse all the time. Doing this before a couple of times with, with your opponents, especially when they're in a really defensive position like, like the turtle. Okay, so we've got cat, mouse, and turtle. We'll come up with another animal in a minute. So from here, well, uh, turtle's an amphibian. No. Alright. Look, to break his, we're not doing it today, but to break his balance, I'm always like messing with his legs. I'm always like kind of shifting his weight around, pushing his hand forward, opening his knee, having him close, open his knee, having him close, open his knee. So that I can push his knee in. We're not doing that one today. That's one of my favourites. So I'm always like, threatening him. I'm threatening to stamp this hook in if I get a chance. So he's always kind of pushing out and in. So here's one of my favourite setups for the clock now. So I'm going to keep this one for now, but we're going to change that grip in a second. I'm going to try and stamp my foot in, and I want him to bring his elbow away. So I'm here like this, I'm pulling his arm away. I'm going to just say, put your arm back on the mat for the moment. So from here, I'm going to stamp my hook in, but he brings his arm back. And immediately, I it's just a little sneaky trick to try and get your hand in to this position. Don't worry if when you get this grip it's not really, really close to his neck. In fact, sometimes you can go too close. All right? So get a good grip there. Nice collar grips. Just pop up there. So I fake the hook to make him bring his hands away. Now what I'm going to do, take my hand off the lapel, go to his wrist. And this is the key. Here's the key. High step here. Okay. Once we get the high step, my head goes on the mat. Walk yourself under. That's our clock jump. Okay. So lapel grip. All the same thing. Cat and mouse. And I'm always trying to make sure he's second guessing himself. He's not sitting comfortably in throw. So I'm going to fake the hook to get him to bring his hands away from his uh, his neck. So here. That's where it got you. Okay? Yeah. Luckily, I'm baldy, so you can see where my big sweaty head mark went. Yeah, right. A greasy head mark. So you can see my head is going to the mat over there. What I want that to do is I want my chest to look way in the back of his head down. The high step though with this foot is what it's all about. Up here. At like, if it's the clock choke, then it's 12 o'clock. Okay? Make sure you get it there. That's going to give you a good balance and a good post on your head. Sorry, whoop. Catch his wrist first. Here. Now from here, pulling the hand up, but not so much. Instead, allow your leg to wind it in. Your head can lift off the map and make sure it's not lifting up excessively. Because I don't want to pull him up with me. Okay, I want his head to stay down. One more time. I can't get it, he's going tight up here, tight up here. Ah! <laughs> Always grab the wrist. <laughs> there you go. It's alright. So I'll cut video down since it's mine. 
and be happy with that. Now you went right there, look at that. Three to one. See my knee on the other side. All right. And the reason being, when I want, when when I bring it on top, I want to land here as much on my inner thigh as possible. So when I go here, if I'm not here, shallow. There we go. The guys, really not on, like, um, really not in control. His, his hips are quite high. You can see, very high towards my neck. When I go deeper inside here like this, and I bring it this way. I feel it a lot better. My elbow's on top here to stop his hips from rising. Okay. And I'll come again to pass. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so I think I'd just be more aggressive at the start of the turn. You can go to your knee. Yeah. The knee pierces. Pierce the knee right into the toes like this. Anything else? We're all happy. Yeah, we're all going to get a roll on because yeah, <laughs> we know what's coming tomorrow. So let's grab uh, milk cards and water and let's get busy. 